Hi, after this long pause, I'm back again with this uh, lander cannon rocket combination, which is going to take us to Moho and take us down into the Mohole, and then, of course, back uh, to orbit and uh, safely back to Kerbin. So the strange thing in this is that uh, the lander can is upside down because the docking port is on the top, so you have to switch to the, uh, the probe core, which is on the uh, main part of the rocket for better orientation. And while we are going uh, to Moho, I'm going to talk about the uh, SLS, yeah, NASA's new space flight system concept. Small hole seems to be an easy target because it's not very far, but in fact it requires the most data from uh, any of the planets. And with this uh, single nuclear engine design, I need several uh, boosts already to get uh, out of Kerbin orbit to the escape trajectory, and getting there with the launch window is very hard because uh, uh, of the high inclination, so I didn't use a launch window as usual, I don't. So anyway, SLS is a kind of new thing, but uh, the strange thing is that it's uh, using old, uh, old technology, so mostly space shuttle technology, which is okay because it's already there, but hey, it's like 30 years old, you can't go to the future uh, with the past. You can use the technology and build on it, but not use the exact same thing. So, as marvelous as the Space Shuttle main engine is, uh, very high ISP, high thrust, uh, reusable, throttable, it's it's old, man, it's it's getting old. Ah, uh, yeah, and the second burn, it was like projected 30 pound minutes burn time, it was a little bit less, of course, because the fuel a drain, but uh, it was a log. And and really, so why why do this? And also use use uh, the Apollo style uh, uh, heat shield for uh, uh, Orion, and uh, also landing landing in the ocean. Face it, Russians have been landing on uh, the ground for forever. They never land in, in oceans. Uh, so now, yeah, here I was uh, adjusting my trajectory for, uh, for a polar orbit as far as possible for optimal fuel usage. Mm, yeah, and uh, I was uh, somewhat slow, somewhat intentionally uh, in the braking, so I I overshot my target. Just so because if I start too soon, then as I slow down. Uh, I will never get close enough, so yeah, and it, it was too late, but uh, anyway, I got to this awkward trajectory and uh, after some braking I could ditch the uh, external tanks and uh, yeah, actually the center tank is uh, for the return journey, so it's not very good to use it for braking, but uh, at this point I just need to do a few hundred of meter per second uh, uh, braking uh, that was remaining, so it wasn't so bad. And uh, yeah, here we are separating um, burn to get to the shallower orbit. An inclination change, uh, well, inclination, whatever we call it, uh, to get an exact polar orbit above the moho. I have to break correctly. And I discarded this decoupler which was there uh, to not consume the fuel uh, from the landing stage. And these metal plates are there uh, to take uh, the force of the landing or, or any collisions with the walls uh, because they have a, high, a very high uh, crash tolerance. So I was trying here to get a steep uh, Deep 
uh, trajectories so that uh, I don't uh, need any complex maneuvers into Moho later on. And uh, surely enough, I have wasted out of fuel with these intermittent stops, but it's very hard to uh, control the spacecraft because the whole thing is rotating around you as it is on the uh, North Pole. There was a hit, but the plates protected me. <coughs> and towards the end, I'm just uh, sliding down in the walls with a very, very small thrust. And this was as deep as it went. It could have gone a little bit deeper, but I didn't care about that. And upwards, I still used the descent stage for that for a while, um, but was very careful not to go too fast to hit the walls. And most of the fuel uh, went uh, towards uh, the vertical, uh, so well, uh, so gravity losses, but. Uh, uh, after that, the usual rendezvous, the only unusual thing in this is that uh, I go to a very high orbit uh, from which I break down uh, to the target vehicle, but uh, this way I didn't have to wait uh, that much because of the time acceleration, uh, but it wastes uh, uh, some fuel. And yeah, the docking is the usual, just the same as uh, all the others, it's not that important. But back to SLS, uh, so yeah, as I see it, politicians force this on NASA. Uh, normally, you just have a goal that, okay, achieve this goal and the politicians don't care how they do it. But this time, it was explicitly so that they had to use the existing shuttle hardware. And in a way, that makes it cheaper, that's true somewhat cheaper, but still they have to be rede redesigned and repurposed and uh, retested uh, in the new configuration and that will be a lot of money. Uh, and they still be the old thing, not the new thing. Okay, this will keep the factories going, the shuttle factories, uh, the shuttle external tank, the shuttle booster uh, and the main engine. So, yeah, but they will discard uh, the main engines on every mission, which is not what it was designed for. And uh, yeah, this is this they, kind of strange. Meanwhile, SpaceX is designing the Raptor, which will be a very high thrust uh, methane, uh, liquid methane, liquid oxygen rocket. And that is uh, something that nobody tried before in large scale. So, yeah, there were small scale prototypes, but nobody used this before. And it has a purpose that because you can manufacture methane on Mars, it's, it's a very very specific purpose that uh, you to use methane. It's it's a good fuel. Uh, it's around the same as the kerosene that is used for, for many lower stages. Uh, it has some drawbacks and some advantages, but it's around the same. It's not as good as uh, the hydrogen that uh, is used by the space shuttle main engine, but uh, it, it's quite good. So they are, they are going to the future. They they pull this high risk. Uh, thing they have to design it maybe it will not work correctly or not work uh, and uh, normally they didn't take that much risk but they do now and i think in a way they are uh, paving the steps what nasa should be doing so this is strange really strange anyway so i have problem here how to get back with the remaining fuel and i didn't have enough fuel for the inclination change and the acceleration maneuver uh, and all my tries uh, somehow ended up in sync with uh, Kermin, so I need to wait a long time to get in position. So I decided to just have a short burn first, which uh, changes my uh, my orbit uh, to an extent that it will just uh, sweep through uh, the Kermin encounter uh, after a few orbits, but it was just uh, around two and a half uh, Kermin years, so it was not really that much waiting time. Uh, and in the meantime, my projected maneuver node somehow becomes strange, uh, like 12,000 uh, meter per second uh, delta V required or something, so I had to readjust it again, uh, which was quite bothersome. But finally, on track, 
and uh, yeah, this this uh, is a really maneuver that uh, cannot be done in 1.0 or will not be possible because of the uh, implemented uh, atmospheric heating or re-entry heating uh, uh, this craft would have burned uh, up in that case but uh, I will I will uh, suffi uh, have sufficient uh, tolerance with this to land there in this version of the game and yeah so and also SpaceX uh, SpaceX uses uh, Pico as uh, the heat shield for uh, its dragon capsule why because they go to the future not uh, stuck in the past as, as now as, uh, is now I don't know why they are doing that so I'm here a very uh, low orbit and uh, yeah finally opening the parachutes and somewhat crashing the craft on landing but it was really nice thanks for watching bye